Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Let's see, I'm going to load up Babyface P. There is Cody Wilson joining us. We are live. Cody, this is your first time coming on the show. We do this thing called Jazz Hands. We're taking it back. From the terrorists. There you go. It's a, it's an icebreaker. Everyone has to do it. It is tradition. We are live. I hope you guys have your big girl panties on out there. This is a little different. You've done a lot of different stuff, Cody. This is gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I you appreciate can... you ambushing me with that. <laughs> I didn't get a time. I didn't get a chance to really give Cody the rundown. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna find you. Just jumping into the deep end. This is episode 912 of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. So, uh, I don't know. I would have to do my math on that. Uh, what do we have? Like, uh, 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 okay. I mean, we have, no, we have like 88, right? 88 episodes, bottles of beer left. Correct. Over. Not 78. You're right. Something, 88. <laughs> something like that. Before we hit a thousand episodes. Yeah. Um, Tonight, the title tonight is uh, Cody Wilson of Defense Distributed. Boom! There he goes. The man, the myth, the legend. You know, for, <laughs> for, for folks look, listening on audio, looking very svelte. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, That's beard, right. beard is in full effect. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this? <laughs> oh, oh you, you don't know, Cody. You don't know. No, I'm kidding. So, yeah, we try to have fun, man. We try to have fun with this. So, and also joining me is Babyface P. There he goes. Patrick is joining us here as well. Um, Patrick demanded to be on the show, and you know. yeah, no, I wanted to. I wanted to talk all things homemade guns. So, yes. it, that's what I've been doing forever. So this is. Mm-hmm. It was like perfect opportunity. Yes, absolutely. We've got shout out to all the folks in the Utreon chat that are joining us. If you guys have specific questions for Cody, just put it here. We'll, we'll try to get to those things. Um, I'm going to do this the traditional way that Lola likes. Otherwise, I'm going to get texts from her. So we'll start out by if, if you don't know who Cody is, we'll have him explain who he is to you guys real quickly here. Let's do that, Cody. Can you tell the folks out there? you know, uh, a little bit of who you are and how you came to be doing what you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, I direct a company called defense distributed and that company has been active for maybe 10 years now and is largely its story with the federal government is kind of the legal story with 3d printed guns. So I, you know, I don't really claim that we began 3d printed guns, but we popularized them with uh, the liberator and DefCAD when the internet was trying to first shut 3D printed guns down back in 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. We, we sued the State Department for a number of years on, on the question of the First Amendment, whether the State Department could in fact keep 3D printed gun files off the internet. And that question, even if it's not settled in, in fact, is is largely settled culturally. And mm-hmm. uh, we have a large yeah. part to do with that. And, and then to fund that litigation and to really continue as a company, we started Ghost Gunner and other brands like ghostguns.com. So we've uh, we've just been a part of like popularizing, commercializing the technology that developed from our open source culture, and we hope to expand that culture and of course the technology. Right. Help. Yeah, I think Cody is being very what I'm going to say demure because you've been like the poster, the poster child, you know, for for the, the fight left, for freedom when it comes to guns. <laughs> for, the for right, right probably wrong. hates him. The gun people love him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know. Our culture is big enough now to um, have, you know, forgotten or in part rejected me, and I, and I think that's good. It shows kind of how it, it, it's in its adolescence now, and I, I never even expected it to be this big this soon. So, when I see comments online like, um, you know, well, you know, this guy's like the grandfather of three D printed guns. Or something. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, that's, that's, I mean, that's the first, happened. the first introduction to you uh, outside of like uh, before ever meeting you or talking to you was. Vice video that they put out? Was maybe it, Motherboard? Was, I don't remember who it was. Yeah, and that's, it was what, seven yeah. or eight years ago? At least eight, Long, maybe. Yeah, maybe nine. Go, go back and look, um, yeah. Long, yeah. Maybe uh, and nine years it was, uh, It's funny, because Vice, I think, in my mind, did it as a, ooh, this is scary sort of thing. You guys should be afraid of this. And to me, I was already building AKs out of my garage. So watching that, I was like, oh, hot damn. This is like... 
this is like the next evolution. This is the next step for like home building. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I can't speak for all gun owners. So what, what we do here, Cody, you know, if you if you're not familiar with what we're up to, we're we're all gun guys here. So, you know, that's that's what we do. I guess we're in the, what you would call the 2A community. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we're not really all the same. We're not all like the guys that you see at Shot Show. I've been to Shot Show before and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we're not exactly all the same. But I think the gun guys like me do see see you as someone who stepped up and put his own life on the line to fight. You know, for for Second Amendment rights. Before before the Ghost Gunner, I think you were doing eighty percent stuff. You know, um, you you've been you've sp- spent a lot of money, gone to court, gotten into, you know, you, you there's gonna be a movie at some point about well, that may be yeah that may be yeah. you know at one point yeah. I'm now I'm telling tales but you know at one mm-hmm. point George Clooney was trying to buy the rights to like my life story or something what what, like, what? you should, you should <laughs> have done it man you should have uh, done it you're like no I'm glad that <laughs> I did it but uh, you know yeah there's been a lot of litigation but you know I don't want to confuse that type of activity with anything too meaningful the other day i was on pacer and i was just looking at how many cases we've been involved in it depends on how you cut it federal cases alone it's you know it's like maybe over 15 or something it's pretty crazy yeah Uh, yeah and i don't know you look back at all the years and that's a lot of time wasted and maybe that's the point so i i I don't want to take more credit than is due but i i do think important things have come from that fighting and from unexpectedly kind of confusing USG and State Department and all these these flacks who didn't really have a theory for our work. They don't have a theory for our wider industry. You, you mentioned the 2A community, but they especially didn't have a theory for this type of, of work, this kind of next generation open source mm-hmm. publication, you know, right. of the files um, and the format <laughs> of the work. So we've kept them off center, I think, for a long time. There's, you know, maybe there's better theories of it now, but just because we've hung in there as long as we have, and I, and I mean, defense distributed when I say we now, but because mm-hmm. we've done that, I really think it's it's stabilized some of the working culture of the community. Uh, and I hope I hope at least that's remembered, you know, 10, 10, 20 years from now. Yeah, I think if you, a lot of stuff that, um, or the things that you've gone through, if you didn't do it, there's a lot of things that folks are out there doing every day that they would, you know, it, it would be a reason to for someone to go after them, lock them up, uh, you know, I mean, no matter what, we're still we're still in the fight and we're still doing stuff. As we were joking around when we started up here, you know, we've both had videos deleted by YouTube. I've been uh, had the whole channel deleted, uh, pulled off live. Ghost Gunner Two. Stuff. I had the number one video on YouTube for the Ghost Gunner. It was like five hundred or six hundred thousand views, mm-hmm. and not long ago it got removed. I got a strike, and mm-hmm. I was so frustrated because it was the only video that was, it was making me like $15 a month. It was the only video <laughs> making me money. And YouTube millionaire. <laughs> yeah, people, well, people were interested in looking at that, yeah. and yeah. They, they immediately went after it. They went after that. They went after I had a Polymer 80 video that they took down. Yeah. So I got a, I got a, a warning and then a strike, like 24 hours apart, and it just it pissed me off to no end. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I remember those mm-hmm. videos. Um, mm-hmm. so it's it's like you're playing in their sandbox, though. You, I guess, have to follow the rules, even though nothing I'm doing is wrong or illegal. Or I, I would say maybe the first part's true, if if not the second part. A lot of a lot of people, even now, like print, shoot, repeat, and people I really respect. Uh, you know, I think they recognize maybe too late that you, know, you can't you can't build too large a house on these shifting sands. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Bosses. That's that's it. part of the problem, though. Is the part of the problem that I have is the info. To me, the information has to be out there, um, and, and that's why I do all of my stuff. Is like showing you how to build anything. I just finished uh, building a Galil, and showing like step by step on doing that because that info should be there. Mm-hmm. It's just it's annoying that somebody gets to dictate that you should not be allowed to see that information because they disagree with it. Yeah. Basically, well, I mean, they're not. Is. Yeah, they're not utilities, although they enjoy some of the protections of um, of utilities. So, before we get deeper into this, I just want to ask you because uh, you know I'm just thinking about sound bites here, man. But uh, I was going to ask you later on, like who was going to play you in the movie, but you just spoke about George Clooney. <laughs> so let's just jump into that right wow. now. Like in the movie wow. of your life, when you eventually sell the rights or whatever it is, or you know, who who do you think is going to play you, Cody? 
You know, I've had like ex girlfriends tell me, you know, maybe Remy Malik or something. Or, like, <laughs> I can uh, see that. No, I can totally see that. Holy sh! I, I was think I was thinking Justin Timberlake, but okay. Oh no! Yeah, you know that's so funny, dude. Like, yeah, there's a, there's always a certain type of girl who compares me to Justin, so that's funny. Yeah, that's cool. Hank, but like, Hank is just Hank is just that type of girl. Uh, <laughs> true story. So the, right. you know, I don't look. I I think kind of like with the YouTube problem. I I don't really think there will be a commercial movies about this kind mm -hmm. of stuff anymore. Like you you talked about the Vice documentary. And that's from 10 years ago. The entire media environment, including Vice, was different 10 years ago. The, the whole Condé Nast mm -hmm. enterprise is about as, yeah. as left as the New York Times and everything else is now. Mm -hmm. And that's been, that's been a conscious effort to basically mm -hmm. like shun these what were hipster cool stories from even 10 years ago and just like kind of prevent them from even being in the narrative. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I'm true. imagining a scenario where no, like it's all memory old and probably there's some you know ai of the future which will whitewash even this podcast from yeah. the internet so. yeah unless we find alternatives that i mean that's why we're using utreon that's why we're always looking into things it's a tough it's a tough road right because you have to build an audience over there that the whole yeah. the whole structure might fall apart because it doesn't get funded and all that but i do it for that reason to try to keep this stuff mm -hmm. al alive and keep it out there and regardless of that we always have our our thing so if someone comes up with a better way we can always upload stuff Go ahead, Funny Patrick. enough, I, I did a search of just a Google search for my YouTube username to see what came up. And mm -hmm. there were a couple of uh, ARFCOM uh, things uh, where people were saying, uh, basically guys were going out there and saying, hey, everything is getting memory hold. What are we, what do you guys have that uh, we should download and keep for ourselves? And my whole, a bunch of guys were suggesting like, just download all the shit off his channel and then mm -hmm. go through it and get all the build videos for like AK, um, mm -hmm. um, MP5, all of it. And I was like, to me, I was flattered. I was like, God, that's cool that people want my content in their life, their personal library. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. neat. Yeah. You know, I think obviously Odyssey and library uh, are, the, are the best places to put things right now. Mm -hmm. Reservation, but of course, uh, library is having its own problems still with the SEC and, you know, crypto winter may knock it, knock it down, knock it out a little. So, Maybe we'll we'll always be asking questions like this until there's some kind of new protocol for the internet. And, mm -hmm. and I can't even advise that you put videos on on DefCAD right now. I don't think we have a good theory for how to really archive lots of video. Hmm. So it, it's a big, big question, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it, but it's an important one that we have to answer. Yeah. And and the thing is, so why was YouTube founded a long time ago, right? I mean, I remember I had never towed a car, and I and I and I had a trailer, and I was like, oh, I got to put this car on the trailer and tow it. You know what I did? I went and looked up YouTube. I don't know how to tie a tie. I'll go to YouTube. It's the same thing. It, that's true. That's everything. And it comes to guns. And if you want people to be safe and have knowledge, not hurt themselves, not hurt other people, all that kind of stuff, you need this. You need what we're doing in order to you know, achieve that, if you really care. I mean, every town knows this. You, you might have just seen the recent Ammo Land piece about this. But, you know, it's not even the politicians. It's these uh, pressure groups like every town in Giffords. Mm -hmm. And it's not even YouTube, really. It's not even their policy. I mean, it, they, they have been slowly pressured into making these policies. But yeah, mm -hmm. groups like Every Town will ensure that eventually no one even knows how to put like a magazine in a gun or how to clean their gun. You know, YouTube will not be a suitable place to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And that could probably, at the rate things have been going, that could probably be true within you know, five years. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.